Hello and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn and with me again is my lovely wife Margaret. Hi everyone. And we are here to do a brewery showcase on Anderson Valley Brewing Company or AVBC as they nickname themselves or someone else has. I've never heard that used. Why don't you go to AVBC.com? Maybe I will. Maybe you will. Anyway, Anderson, anyway. Anderson Valley out of Anderson California. Valley. Mendocino, Mendo, Mendocino? Mendocino County, California. Is that how you say it? Mendocino, yeah. yeah. Mendocino or Mendocino. I think it's Mendocino. Yeah. Californians anyway. correct us. Yeah, so up there in Northern California, we did not get a chance to visit them on our uh, visit up there. You got a little thing on your thing. Got it. Um, but... Uh, it seems like a really cool place. It's a very remote, bucolic place. Um, yeah, they actually have. Sorry, go ahead. Go on. So anyway, so I was gonna say the the, the town. The name of the town is Boonville. So it's not just in Mendocino County. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of the town is Boonville, and as Chris said, it is very remote and and uh, well, it was at one time very remote. I think it still is to some degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's actually one of the reasons we didn't go to that town yeah. uh, when we were in Northern California because it was just gonna be really out of the way to, and, and kind of hard to get to. Yeah, it's a shame, but yeah. next time. Yeah, exactly. Because it does sound like a really cool place. Um, it's got. I think the most fascinating part about um, Boonville and the out in the valley in, in general, I guess, is mm -hmm. is this um, local dialect that they've developed, a local f folk language that they've developed called Boontling. Yeah, um, Boontling, and, I think they call it. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently you're fluent. I watched a video. You're fluent. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can go online and. Pop and yeah, you can go. You can go online and see um, videos of people speaking bootling. But what it was was a, a, a local dialect that kind of grew out of you know this this town being so remote. It was a logging and farming community. And in fact, there's also a beer tie-in. Um, oh. Supposedly, now I don't know. You know, I think there's a few different stories on how this language originally got started. But one of the stories is, is that it developed from. Women and, and actually children at the time who used to work in the uh, hop fields because this is a huge hop growing area, mm -hmm. or at least was a very big hop growing area um, part of the country. And they, and they just kind of, for fun, to pass the time as they were working in the hop fields, just kind of came up with this language, um, you know, kind of substituting words and making up words for, for other words. In fact, I noticed that the cans here actually have some bootling on them. Yeah, it says ball horner, which means good drinking. Exactly. Uh, and then there's another one that says. Hop Otten, but that I don't know what that means. Well, yeah. hop is hoppy, but Otten. Uh. Anyway, we've got three of their beers here. Um, all their beers are very reasonably priced $9.99 a six pack for pretty much anything in their repertoire. And yeah, they do a lot of uh, English, traditional English styles. So they have an IPA, an ESB, they have an oatmeal uh, stout, they have an amber. So it's kind of cool, very, very English. Um, and another cool thing they have is they actually use a hop back, which is a very English brewing method. Uh, people don't really use it anymore, but it's a way of basically filtering your beer or straining your beer. So after you boil the wort, you actually run it through a bed of, of whole cone hops and mm. use that to filter it. So. Um, it's not very economical, you know, yeah. which is why a lot of the big guys don't do it. But I saw a video online of, of their hop back, and it's really cool. I mean, it's just a huge, massive tank full of hops, and they just run the, the, the beer through it and then just let it kind of filter out. That's cool. Yeah, and it also imparts, a, it's like dry hopping, right, basically. Right, yeah, sure. Or very late addition hopping, I should say. Um, anyway, let's get going. Uh, the first beer we have here... Uh, obviously, they can and they also bottle. Uh, this is their summer solstice. Uh, just, I think it's a light, easy drinking amber um, session ale for IBU. Wow. Bless <laughs> yeah. you. That's amazing. Yeah. And the fact that it's even like noted is funny. Yeah. I mean, that's that's less than uh, Budweiser. <laughs> that's and, and, you know, so when you're pouring this beer, I actually just. I've never had this, uh, just yeah. to come out and say that. But the the, the the name of the beer, Summer Solstice, the description of it being sort of an easy drinking beer and the fact that it's 4 IBU, I was expecting like, you know, 
Bud Light to come yeah. out of the can, right. but not at all. No. Uh, this beer has a really nice, nice color. Uh, I'd say like a light amber color yeah, or something. Yeah, like an orange amber, a yeah. little bit of red tone in there. Mm -hmm. Nice and clear. Uh, the hop back is, is doing its work. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they whirlpool too, who knows. But um, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Don't know the exact date on the cans, but um, you know, it, it, this is their current seasonal. Mm -hmm. so. And it smells really good too. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot more character than I would have expected, just knowing uh, the, the style of beer that it is. Yeah, it's got a really caramely, toasty character to it. Uh, a little bit fruity. Yeah, I was going to say definitely fruity. Uh, and, and to me, it's like dried apricots or something like that. Um, yeah, my nose is a little stuffy since I sneezed. Yeah, so. it's sneezing. Sorry. Yeah, get some dried apricots for sure, and like maybe dried apples or something like that yeah I can get the kind of the the dried apple thing going mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely getting that that nice kind of English biscuity mm -hmm. crystal malt uh, character as well and a little bit of almost like not not spicing but a light almost like a sugar cookie smell yeah to it. definitely sugar uh, sugar I think is a, a good descriptor like brown sugar mm. kind of thing and when you taste it even more so mm -hmm. almost tastes like uh, like a, well, almost like <clears throat> Christmassy or something like that. Yeah. But very light and drinkable. You're right. Uh, in fact, I had a, I kind of cheated as you were taking that last sniff. Again, as I usually do, I had already started drinking it. And yeah, brown sugar, kind of Christmas cookie type. Graham thing. cracker. Graham cracker. Those honey yeah. graham crackers is a, mm -hmm. is really what what. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm it, it reminds me a little of like a Great Lakes Christmas without all that spicing mm -hmm. that you get in a Christmas mm. beer. But it almost seems like it's like they took, you know, Great Lakes, stri stripped out the spice, and this is what you're left with. I wouldn't think of this as a summer beer. Me neither. But it's nice. I it really like this. It is nice. And I think it would, could go really nicely with grilled meats and things that you're going to have in the summertime. Yeah. You know, grilled pork chops, something like that. Mm -hmm. I could see yeah, that working Yeah, and it's really got well. uh, some heft to it as well, so mm -hmm. it could even hold up to maybe some spicier barbecues and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, really nice beer. Um, definitely ball horn in with this one. And... Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I'm surprised by this beer, and I really like it. I will be picking up more of this beer. I have to agree. Yeah, uh, so I really like that, that graham crackery mm -hmm. um, lightness. No bitterness, obviously, at all. Um, medium mouth feel. Just, it kind of goes back quick. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, 92 with this beer. I, I thought yeah. it was pretty darn think, good. That's, that's, that's a fair score. I'll, I'll go with you on that. I think it was a fair score. Um, yeah, pan, ham it up to, oh, you need to get that. Oops. Um, another thing is, uh, like so many of those Northern California breweries, they're very environmentally friendly. They get, I think, almost 50% of their energy from renewable resources like solar powered, it says on their cap, solar powered brewing. Uh, they also have windmills and, and stuff like that. Cool. So that's cool. This is their ESB, uh, a style you don't see too many people, uh, too many breweries doing on a large uh, year round scale. Um, this is one of their regular all the time offerings, uh, another English style. Uh, and an ESB is kind of um, not quite uh, yet to a pale ale yet. Uh, it's going to have that same crystal malt character uh, and it's going to have that I like like toffee buttered honeyed biscuit. Not buttered but honeyed biscuit yeah. and quite a bit of bitterness too. I think this is like a 60 IBU ESB so they consider this to be an Americanized version of it. Yeah. So dark gold color. Um, smells really really smells nice. Awesome. It, it's actually another really nice looking beard. Kind of had that fluffy head when you first poured yeah. it. Um, so a little bit hazy. Mm -hmm. um, this beer isn't the freshest. Uh, I was just uh, kind of deciphering the, the bottling code on there. And it's uh, about five months old. Mm. So, you know, not not the best. So we'll, we'll see. It smells great, though. I'm really getting the exact ESB character that I want. Yeah. Um, you know, biscuit, like warm biscuits. Yeah, totally. Yeah, honey biscuit for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, exactly what you kind of want. That's those nice crystal malts in there. Right. You also get some nice kind of floral hops. Um, they don't necessarily taste like or smell like those big West Coast 
hops, you know, you're not really getting grapefruit and citrus and stuff like that, more of like a pine and, and earth and subtle floral yeah. character to it. Yeah, very subtle, but yeah, I, again, it smells great. It's a really nice beer. I, I don't know. I get I get like a little harshness out of this. Do you do you get like a like an acetone or anything like that? Do you get like a, it it feels it seems boozy to me, but I it's not it doesn't have the heat of a boozy beer, but it has like a little bit of that. I don't know. It has some harshness for me. <clears throat> Maybe it's just me. Um, I think it's got some bitterness yeah. to it. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you're not picking that up at all. Um, I'm feeling a little bit muted right now after that sneeze. It's very weird, but yeah, you know what? It might be the bitterness. Yeah, that, that's 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 um that's feeling harsh to a me. A little bit of yeah, the the bitterness isn't isn't the most clean. There's a little bit of almost like a tannic quality to it, just slightly. I still think it's a pretty darn good beer. It's just a a very bitter example of an ESB. Um, it's pretty well balanced, so there's a, a nice amount of malt character. Mm -hmm. uh, that's I think the predominant feature here is that malt, that that biscuity um, kind of sweet malt. But then right as you start getting that, then you then you start getting that that woody hops, mm. and it is. A little tannic, yeah, was, um, like like tea or something to me. Yeah, kind of like a little little Earl Grey tea ish, you know, like a little citrus in the tea or something like that. Yeah, um, I like it. I'm not 100% in love with it. Uh, I, I like the summer solstice more. Yeah, by, by quite a bit. Uh, but it's a good beer. I'd like to see where this is fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, as right. it is, I'm probably gonna go. Uh, you know, mm, 87. All right. Yeah. I mean, I. I I'll go, I don't know, a little lower than that, 85, I don't know, something that's just not popping for me in this beer. Yeah, I, I'm often more generous than you are with the reviews. I'm a harsh woman. You are. <laughs> but I usually do like bitter beers, so there's that as well. It's true. You need a rinse, are you okay? Uh, All right, give me a rinse. Sure. Yeah, we got the IPA coming. Yeah. So the next one is their Hop Otten IPA. Again, I don't know uh, when this was bottled, or canned, I should say. I know when it was bottled, which was never. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they have some sort of undecipherable code on here. I don't even know if that is the bottling code or what. Uh, but yeah, this, oh, one other thing. Have you noticed, I, I think I've already asked you this question. Did, did I ask you what this animal was on the can? When, when we were uh, hanging out, drinking some beers from Anderson Valley. Uh, you did ask me, but I don't remember. I think I said jackalope. Yeah, so they have a picture on all their things of a bear with antlers. And we were sitting there talking about, well, what is that animal? What, what is that thing they have on there? We're like, yeah, a jackalope, a, a barrelope, um, an uh, antibear. <laughs> and then finally someone's like, duh, it's a beer. What? It's a beer. Oh, God. A deer and a bear. A beer. Totally, right? Without it, I mean, I haven't confirmed this with Anderson Valley, but there's little doubt in my mind that the name of that animal is a beer. Yeah, you're right. It has to be. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, that's awesome. a bad, bad Excuse joke. Me. The fact that somebody came up with that, well, they're creative, I guess. They're out there in the middle of nowhere. What do you want them to do? They're, they're so bored they, <laughs> they come up with their fun. own language. It's fun. It's like, I'll draw this. Yeah, you're right. It's, you got to be bored if you come up with a language. <laughs> um, it looks uh, to me quite a bit like the ESB, actually. Uh, a little bit of haze in there. You know, maybe they don't whirlpool. Maybe it's just that hop back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, nice looking beer. Kind of like a hazy orange color. Um, this is also a pretty big IPA. I think it's like, uh, you know, 70 or 80 IBU and 7% alcohol. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, so not messing around with that. Um, and, and I get I get like a, a nice, like, sweet orange um, nose out of this. Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting more of like a marmalade, like a bitter mm -hmm. orange. Um, yeah. With, with pine and wood. Uh, you're getting a lot of malt as well in, in there. 
uh, some of that same kind of crystal malt that they seem to like in there. I'm, I'm saying crystal, I, I don't know, but that English style malt. Um, it smells like a, a pretty balanced, big, like almost like an English IPA. Yeah, it really does. Let's give it a taste. A little bit of spice in there too. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Yeah, you're definitely some spice on the nose anyway. Let me take another sip. I always just go through this too fast. Oh, it's nice. Uh, it's got a nice kind of s smooth mouth feel to it. A little bit kind of raisiny, like a spiced raisiny quality to it. Definitely the pine and the um, kind of the woody, barky kind of stuff. Barky. Maybe and, and barky. And, um, uh, yeah, but you know what? So so for me, I, you know, I get like all what you described is mm -hmm. I think right on for me as well. Um, some bitterness, but then it kind of drops off and, and it leaves me kind of feeling like not quite ball horning. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I feel incomplete. I, I feel in the beginning say. it's got everything there though. It's got the malt. Um, you know, we we're talking a lot about the hops because it's an IPA, but you've got those really nice um, kind of sturdy malts to, to back it up. Um, it's a pretty balanced beer considering how bitter it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good. I, I, I feel like I just want a little more very from it on, woody. on the very back end. Yeah, um, see, I I don't mind it uh, on on the end. I, I think it's almost more like the mid palate to me. You get it at first, you get that bitterness and that malt, and then it kind of goes away, and then you're left with kind of a nice, mild bitterness to it. Um, it's not the the greatest IPA mm -hmm. in the world, um, but I like it. Yeah, and I like and it if too. you like kind of those woody, earthy hops, it's got them in spades here, and it's also got some really nice malts going on as well, which a lot of times, you know, IPAs now are only about the hops, but really, I mean, there should be malt backing to it. Right. I mean, that's one of the main things that differentiates it between uh, an American style pale ale. You know, you want to have some of that malt, and I like that they have that here. Um, I think it's a good beer. I think it's uh, a little bit better than the ESB. Again, you know, who knows how fresh it is. We just have to kind of rate it as we're tasting it. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, I'll go... I'm thinking like um, 89.90. Well, I'll go 90. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Uh, I'll go 87. Uh, okay. Good. Solid. Not great. But yeah, I mean, definitely a nice drinkable beer. Yeah. To me, a 90 is good. And I feel this beer is good um yeah ma yeah maybe 89 i don't know it's it's a fine beer um i i know which one of the three i'm gonna be drinking yeah you're right which is this one yeah you're right and that's a surprise i mean honestly i thought this would just be a quaffing beer that i would just you know would not be memorable at all but i will definitely remember some summer, summer solstice yeah summer solstice year. for ibu that's <laughs> really cool yeah ale with natural flavor added oh i gotta look into that yeah. see what that is so maybe it is spiced somehow yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, well, that's about it, guys. Um, tell us what you thought about this kind of look at the Anderson Valley a Brewing Company. Uh, let us know. APBC is what they like to go by. And, hey, let us know what you want to see more of. Uh, what do you want to add, Margaret? Uh, 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 nothing. I mean, I guess people have seen, people always say they want to see more Max. So I put some I put a Max photo up on Facebook this past week. Hopefully, hopefully you caught that because I, I want to see more Max as well. I think you guys have great taste who want to see more Max. So. Oh, okay. You asked. What do I want to add? I added it. Yeah, all the uh, middle-aged secretaries of the world want to see pictures of our adorable little Maxie. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. It's true. People, whenever you put a picture of that darn dog up on our site, it gets tons of clicks. <laughs> it's, it's like catnip. Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway, hey, even uh, regardless of, of what you want to see, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, feeling a little bit kind of groggy, so I'm sorry if I was a little subdued this time but that's all right huh, that's not the same all right well is that good to apologize mid-show for the show yeah it at is. the end of the that's, show that's okay. that's a real uh, you pump up the audience that way uh, well we actually <laughs> had some delicious no i, I did that on purpose oh because you want to end it with the summer solstice i yeah. see how it is you're gonna hog it uh we've got some great beer to ball horn and to do yeah, we've got some ball horning to have <laughs> ball horning sounds dirty and hopefully you do too.
I was going to try to come up with a boon word, but I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know any boon words unless it's literally looking at me on a can. Cheers. Cheers.